Well, that's a day that we should never forget, the day that God saved us, and I'm thankful for that. And uh, we're here on the commemoration of 9-11 as well, and that's also a day that we should never forget for those that gave their lives for us, fighting for us, and I praise the Lord for that. And I'm pro uh, law enforcement, I'm pro fire department, I'm pro, e I'm pro anybody that's trying to protect me, and uh, I appreciate them, thank God for them, thank the Lord for every night that they leave their families not knowing whether or not they're going to come home in one piece, and I'm thankful for what they do. And if you can imagine, 21 years ago, last night, 3,000 people kissed their family for the last time. They hugged their sons and daughters for the last time. They told their wife, I love you for the last time. We don't know what a day may bring forth, the Bible says. May God help us. May God help us to have short accounts of people and be right with him. Amen. And thank you so much for being here. If you're visiting with us, we're glad you're here. And I've met so many visitors. This is our Grandparents' Day, Legacy Sunday, and we're excited about it. And I thank the Lord for you being here. And I'm excited to hear the combined choir. Our kids have been practicing. And uh, it's just so good to have many of our grandparents here. Then we have visitors here, not a part of Grandparents' Day, Scotty and Michelle and other folks with them. Thank you all for being here. And uh, if you're visiting for the first time, there's a card inside of the pew there. If you want to fill that out, you can scan the QR code and do it that way, or you can take a pen and fill it out. Turn that in, in the uh, even the offering plate, or you can go to the back at the end of the service, and we have a gift for you. We'd love to meet you. Thank you for being here. Those that are watching or listening, thank you for tuning in. We're going to bow for prayer together. Can we do that? Would you pray with me and not just listen to me pray? Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this day, and God, I pray you'll speak to our hearts. Lord, I pray for every aspect of the service. Lord, I pray that you would help us. Holy Spirit of God, I pray you would sanction everything this morning. And Lord, more imp most important, I pray there's one here lost today. I pray this will be the last day they're lost. I pray you'll save the soul nearest hell. I pray you'll reclaim the backslider. I pray you'll help us to draw closer to you. Help us to realize our responsibility to you. And we'll praise you and thank you for all you do. Bless the singing in every part of the service. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Right, right before that we sing this song this morning, we sang this song last the first week of July. And the first week of July, right after that, Miss Christie was going to have surgery. And the doctors were telling her it's going to be a year before she's going to be able to even talk clearly again. And here she is today. We want to glorify God with this and not miss what God's done and her being able to sing this song in this morning. And you pray for us as we sing.
our feet. Choir's going to come down and join you at this time. Turn around and greet someone and welcome them to Freedom Baptist Church. in your book to God be the glory and the words are right behind me as the choir comes down to join you let's sing it out together on that first verse here we go to God be the glory great things he had done so mighty the And I've not seen you as a congregational smile while we sing like this. Maybe we need to have the kids up here more often. It sure does look good. On that last verse, great things he had taught us. Here we go. Great things he had taught us. singing our ushers are up here we're gonna have a word of prayer and we're gonna receive the offering this morning and once uh, brother Ron Kaiser is done praying you can be seated and we're gonna get ready to enjoy the kids choir and the teen choir and uh, thank you so much for being with us brother Ron why don't you pray for the Sunday morning offering and the remainder of the service as well our father in heaven Lord we thank you for this opportunity Lord to just give back a portion that you blessed us with and Lord we just pray that uh, your blessing, the service, the singing, and all that we do. In Christ's name, amen.
Well, that's a lot of kids up there. And you listen to them and they sing better when you smile. Amen. And uh, we'll sing for food, right? Amen. Boy, that's a great looking sight right there. Praise the Lord. And, uh, and none of this is scripted. They, they, don't, they don't have a script to read. So kids are going to act like kids. Don't be too miffed about it. All right. All right. They're going to sing for us and we're going to enjoy. You pray for them as they sing.
Cause everything's alright in my heart I know that I am safe Oh, how I long to do God's will And I admit that I'll fail Him still But I'm so glad that His grace Amen. You may look this way and thank you so much for being here today. Wasn't that good? Praise the Lord. I tell you, I do thank the, the Lord for the day that God saved my soul and uh, very thankful for it and thankful for these kids. And uh, when you move a hundred and some kids out of that choir, it takes a minute. Amen. And uh, I, I appreciate every minute of it that they've got to share with us today. And uh, we just got everybody up there that we could and that's a blessing. And very thankful for it. We're going to have a Grandparents Day video at this time. And uh, guys, if you could dim the lights there and help us with that. And we'll go ahead and show the video. Thank you just for being you. For making life more bright. More rich in love and laughter. More rich in wisdom. And delight. For everything you've shared with me. And for big and small. Your stories and your smile. I am grateful for it all. I feel you're always there for me. Wanted just to say. You're always in my heart. Each and every day. Happy. 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 Mama and Papa. Ma and Pa. Okay, um, Grandma, Papa, and Granny Pat. 
Grammy, Grandma, Pop, Pop. Mimi and Poppy. On my dad's side, it's Nana and Pop, and on my mom's side, it's Grandma and Grandpa. Um, Martha is Grandma, and, uh, Carolyn is Nana, and Roy was Grandpa, and Bruce was Pop. Nana, Nanny, Papa. Mama and Pop, Pop, Mimi and Poppy. Nana, Papa, Nori, and Papa. Well, I call one Granny, I call, I call one Granny Vita, um, I call one Nana, and I call one Mimi. Papa John, Papa Ben, Papa Bobby, Papa Bear, and I can't remember the other one. Ninety. Sixty-five and sixty. Seventy-four and seventy-seven. Seventy-one. Ma is like 82-ish, and Pa is 83. Ooh, 85. Um, in the 70s? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. 73. 84. 84. Nana and Pop are in their upper... I think Poppy is 15 and my Mimi 16. I don't think a shade over 25. 65, 65, 65, and 64. Or it might be 66 and 65, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm in there somewhere, it's one of those two. It. Um, Daddy had a bike like Poppy John did. A golf cart. Video games. I want my grandpa's hunting rifle. My grandpa's Corvette. Grandpa's truck. A lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had their caring and giving spirit. Uh, wisdom. I would just say, I mean, the amount of wisdom they have and that they shared to me. I wish I had her spirit to always give thanks to God regardless of the situation she's in. Love. I would say patience. Um, two things. Her house and her patience with everything. My grandparents have all strived um, to work to leave things better than they found them and to make an impact in all areas. And I hope that in 40, 50 years, um, I'm able to look back and feel like I've had that same impact. Their positivity and encouragement. Happy Grandparents Day. Oh, that was good. Brother Frederick should get to stay here. Good job. <laughs> and, uh, well, that was good. Tabitha, thank you. Where's Tabitha at? She's with the kids, the little peoples. But uh, that was great. And uh, I appreciate that. And I think Jackson, man, he's going to have whatever he wants when he gets on 15 and 16, you know. <laughs> Amen. I'm telling you, buddy. And uh, I'm thankful, I'm thankful. And, and old Jake, he's trying to get it exactly right. You know, that's, he's gonna get it right. And Dave didn't know what to say, did he? Huh? I, don't know. I better not get in that. Nehemiah chapter number four this morning. And uh, we're off track from the parables. And let's just go to Nehemiah chapter four in the scriptures, Nehemiah chapter number four. Just a few quips and quotes for you. Grandmas are moms with lots of frosting. <laughs> Grandfathers are just little uh, antique little boys. Never have children, only grandchildren. <laughs> when grandparents enter the door, discipline flies out the door. Grandmas never run out of hugs or cookies. If I'd known how wonderful it would be to have grandchildren, I'd have had them first. You've heard that. <laughs> uh, my grandkids believe I'm the oldest thing in the world. And after two or three hours with them, I believe it too. <laughs> Grandmother, a wonderful mother with lots of practice. 
Grandparents are similar to a piece of string, handy to have around and easily wrapped around the fingers of their grandchildren. <laughs> well, that's true. You know, it's amazing. Um, 6.1 million grandparents whose, grand, whose grandchildren younger than 18 live with them. 6.1 million. That's a lot. To think, so basically, a large portion of our society has been raised by the grandparents. And um, I appreciate everyone that does that. Now, we know ideally that's not the ideal situation. We've learned in life that life's not always ideal. Amen. And you, you do what you have to do in the moment, in the span of time that God has given you uh, here on the earth. Nehemiah chapter number four. And I want to read to you verse number 10, if I could. Nehemiah chapter four, verse 10. And Judah said, Nehemiah 4.10, the strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed and there's much rubbish so that we're not able to build the wall. Now, we see in Nehemiah here, he is rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. Uh, there were several trips to Jerusalem. Trip number one, almost 50,000 people returned under Zerubbabel's leadership in 586 B.C. The purpose there was to rebuild the temple. Uh, trip number two, about 1,754 people returned. Ezra with Ezra. Uh, some 80 years later, the purpose of Ezra's trip was to rebuild the people. And then we see the third trip that we come to in Nehemiah chapter 4. And this whole, whole book is about this trip. Uh, but Nehemiah leads some 14 years later. Uh, and his purpose is to rebuild the walls. And so he sets out upon the task to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem facing much Opposition, And uh, there are those who said, you know, if a fox went up, they'd tear that wall down. Nonetheless, 52 days later, Nehemiah finished the wall with the people that God gave him. And in order for him to do that, I believe he had to have something in his crawl, something in his heart. Besides wishful thinking and farewell wishes, he had to have a burden and he did. But more than just a burden, he had reasons to remain on the wall and finish the job. And we'll see in chapter 6, he comes to the place where he says, I'm, I'm not coming down off of this wall to talk to you, to be hindered by you. I'm staying right here and finishing what God has given me to do. But everybody likes to start, but very few people finish. Very few people finish the way that God intended for them to finish. And, um, and there's a temptation for all of us not to finish. In 1969, Reggie Jackson, Jackson had 33 home runs at game 71. 162 game season after 1962, I believe is right. And uh, so 162 games Game 71, he's at 33. He's on pace here to, to hit 74 home runs. You know how many he hit that year? He hit 47. He started good, but he didn't finish good. It's really not how you start. It's how you finish. It's how you finish. Now, on this day, as I mentioned 21 years ago, there was a Captain Patrick Brown of Fire Department FDNY number three truck, number three ladder. He was over that, he was a commander over that truck. So he calls in and he says, I'm on the 35th floor. Okay, okay. Then he says, just relayed to the, can, the command post, we're trying to get up. He said, let them know. We're trying to get up at least, I mean, I, I hear stuff on the 75th floor. He said, we're trying to get up. So tell them. 
He said, there's numerous civilians at all the stairwells, numerous burn injuries, folks coming down with burn injuries. He says, I'm trying to send them down first and I'm, and I'm trying to get up to get more people. He said, apparently it's above the 75th floor. I don't know if they got there yet. Okay. Three truck and we're still heading up. So he gives a check. Three truck, we're still heading up. That's, that's quick lingo when you're in the middle of a crisis. Just, you know, not, not, we don't have time for hope you're doing well. You know, truck three, we're going up. Okay, thank you. Then command post comes back and says, command post to ladder three. That would be him. Command post to ladder three. Get out of the building. Get out now. Captain Patty Patrick Brown responded, this is the officer of ladder company three and I refuse the order. Well, I sense chill bumps. He said, I refuse the order. In other words, I ain't coming out. I'm on the 44th floor. We have too many burned people with me. I'm not leaving them. That was the last transmission he had on the radio. He died there. There are some things in life that are worth fighting for. There are some things in life worth dying for. And I think in our culture, we have become way too passive in our efforts to procure the next generation and to make sure that they have the same opportunity to receive Jesus Christ and the same opportunity to hear the gospel and the same opportunity to grow up in a Christ-honoring, God-fearing environment. I'm afraid we're much too passive in this generation, this just lay down culture, this no fight culture, unless it's for your own rights. Remember this rule of thumb. It's always better to fight for somebody else than yourself. If you're going to fight, fight for somebody else. Did he just say fight? Yeah. We've lost that in our day. I'm not talking about fisticuffs. But there ought to be something so strong in you. And what you've seen behind me this morning is worth fighting for. So we come to chapter 4. Remember, Nehemiah is rebuilding the walls. He's got people with him. They come the same. Nehemiah's burden. They come to chapter 4. verse. Let's look at verse 2 and then we'll come to verse 10. And he spake before his brethren in the army of Samaria and said, what do these feeble Jews? Now this is Sanballat, who I told you was already, he's giving them grief. He's just, just giving them down the country. You're not going to do it. You're, look at you. So he, he said, what do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they receive, revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? So it's one thing to think. And, and I want to say to you, our culture is decaying at a rapid pace. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out if we keep heading the direction we are heading as a nation. And not just a nation, but as Christianity in a, in a general um, a general blanket, we are in trouble. And so if somebody doesn't do something fast, we're in trouble. And God has strategically placed us and you and specifically we're, we're honoring our grandparents on Legacy Sunday. Your job is not over till you take your last breath down here. I, there's no time to check out. There's no place to where I'm turning in my card or I'm retiring or I'm, you'll find no retirement plan in God's economy ever. Amen. Ever. Those stalwarts of God finished what God, Nehemiah finished what God had given him. But we come to verse 10, if you'll look at it with me. And Judah said, the strength of the bears of burdens is decayed. And there's much rubbish so that we're not able to build the wall. So in, in verse 2, we have an outsider saying you can't do it. But now in verse 10, we have an insider saying you can't do it. 
This is not somebody who had an unbelieving world view. This is not somebody who was lost. This is somebody in verse 10 who was, who was saved and that they should have the same focus. They should have the same goals to go forward, but they didn't. He said, there's a lot of rubbish here. And uh, in verse two, Sam Ballot, there's a lot of rubbish here. And he may have just mimicked Sam Ballot. Be careful who you hang around. You'll soon be talking like them. In verse 2, he said, hey, there's a lot of trash. Verse 10, the guy on the inside says, there's no use here. It's worthless. We're, we're, there's no sense in us building at all. We, we can't get the job done. There's no need in trying. And if you're not careful in our culture, you just, I just don't understand these young people today. There's no time to check out. I ditto that statement. Hallelujah. Ditto times two right here. I just don't understand this. I, I don't either. I just don't know why. I don't either. But I do know this. We have reasons to remain. And we had about 120 of them up here. But Nehemiah had some reasons in his heart that he stayed to finish what God gave him to do. And if you don't have any, if you're just kind of floating along, you will float the wrong direction. Floaters never end up in a desired destination. You got to go there on purpose. And Nehemiah had purpose in his heart. He had purpose in, in everything he did. Every word he said, every action his body partook of, Nehemiah had purpose. He had a reason behind what he was doing. So you got one guy that says, we can't do anything. And you got another guy that says, we won't do anything. Same result. It's like those teenagers I've made mention of before in Florida, watching that man at Cocoa Beach drowned in video and then laughing about it. And they weren't charged because there was no law that said a citizen had to assist. They said, we're not going to do anything. Judah said, we can't do anything. No matter what you say, we want or we can't, it, the, the kids, the next generation, our responsibility to them is wasted. It's gone. If you say you can't or you won't, same conclusion, then they're in trouble. They're in trouble. Life is more than about our retirement, our 401k, making it cushy uh, to leave here and go to heaven from. God never intended this to be a cushy place as a platform to go to heaven. He intended this is, this is a battlefield. This is a huddle for God's people to do his work, to do kingdom work until he comes or until we leave. There's no time for apathy. There's no time for idleness. There's no time for passivity. There is time to be engaged in the warfare that, that God has put us in. And if you fail to see that you're in the biggest battle you've ever been in in your life, no matter how old you are, there's never been a bigger battle than the one you're facing this morning. For the souls of our, of our children, but not just the souls of our children, the direction of our churches... Let's not even talk about America for a minute. Let's just talk about the direction of our churches. We're in trouble. We're in trouble. So you got, you got the folks who won't do anything. You got the folks that say we can't do anything. For whatever reason, they may have their eyes on the past. Some of you this morning, your past may be inhibiting you from going forward. Some, it's eyes on present problems. You're looking at the problem now and it's so bad out there and it's so bad. And we don't even know what a, uh, the definition of a woman pastor and we're in trouble and it's bad. And I know it's bad. Uh, but if you continue to look to the past or look at your problems, you will be stifled and stymied into doing absolutely nothing. And the, the generation under you will look back and say, thanks for nothing. Thanks for nothing. Thanks for leaving us here with no example, with no direction, with no compass for leaving. And listen, we need, uh, we have the Bible, we have directions, but we need some people who will follow it. And set as an example to the next generation, this is not only the way you go, this is how you go. This is how you go on that way. I can show you the map, but I'd rather have you lead me. Yeah, you just follow the map. Well, I know that. Crazy. 
You've heard people say that before? Just follow the map. Apple will get you there. Well, up until two months ago, that wasn't true because Apple didn't even have my road on, on the map. So that's not always true. So what we have to do, I had to say, David, get out there and go to the, go to the end of the road. Tell the Amazon man to come down here. <laughs> it's this way, <laughs> you know. And I kept calling, tell him, still no chain, no road signs, no nothing. Still no road sign. But we are on Apple Maps, praise the Lord. If you look on there, you can see Tickle Road goes across. It's not in the grass anymore. It's good. But you know, we need not only to say this is, uh, the Bible is a good road map. They've heard it all their life. They need to see it in action. So what were the reasons that he remained? Number one, the connection with his heritage. Turn over to chapter two, if you would. Chapter two, verse 20. If you've ever followed me in a message, I would, I would admonish you to follow today. The connection with his heritage. In Nehemiah chapter two, verse 20. What's the difference between Judah and him? What's the difference between Sambalat and Nehemiah? Verse 20 of chapter two. Then answered I them and said unto them, the God of heaven, he will prosper us. Now notice he was connected to a person. He said, the God of heaven, he will prosper us. It's more than a church. It's more than a community. If a church is only commit, connected to a community, you failed. And if you say, my connection is, is with a church or my connection is with a community or my connection is with a conference or a creed or a convention, you've missed the connection. And you know what happens if you miss a connection to the airport, you get left. You've missed the connection. He didn't say, then I answered them and said unto them, the God of heaven or the God of the church or the church will prosper us or the community will prosper us. He said, the God of heaven, that there was a real connection between him and God. Then he said, therefore, we, his servants will arise and build, but ye have no right no, or no portion rather, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. So what he first says is I've got a connection. And I want to say, well, why do so many young people, uh, you know, ditch church and, and leave in their 20s? And why do, and Brother Fredericks did a tremendous job Wednesday night on that message. But why does so many, uh, the, the, it boils down to this. If there's no connection to the Lord Jesus Christ in the form of a relationship, then there will be no staying power whatsoever. And you can't, you can't board them in. You can't pull them in. You can't chase them in. You can't get a John Deere, Deere tractor with a log chain and pull them in. You, you're not, there has to be a connection. And Nehemiah had a connection with his heritage. And it wasn't just buildings and people and the people of Jerusalem. It was the God of those people. It was Jehovah that he had a connection with. And I want to say, Pastor, what will keep you in the fight? What will keep you grandparents in long term uh, loving God and leading by example? I want to tell you, there's got to be a connection with Jesus Christ. There has to be a connection with the heritage of the blood bought, the redeemed. There has to be a connection uh, with Jesus Christ, the connection to his heritage. What did he say? Notice the last phrase he uses here. He says, but ye have no portion, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. He said, you could care less about this place. You don't have any connection. You, he, they, they were heathens. I mean, these were idolaters. He said, in other words, he says, y'all be, y'all manage the, the affairs of your own idolatrous community and I'm going to manage God's affairs. You, you deal with the devil's business. And he said, I'm going to deal with God's business. He says, I, you don't have any connection here. You have no portion, no right, no memorial. My people buried here. I mean, God uh, gave, gave us this land and, and we, it's special to us because of our relationship with God. And he said, I don't, under, I don't expect you to understand. And just to time out, you don't expect your coworkers to understand your connection to God. Don't expect them to, and when you think something's a big deal and they say it's not a big deal, it's all according on who your father is. 
There are some things that are a big deal and they, they deserve to be fought for, not just watched uh, float down the stream. And he said, I, I'm going to tell you right now, you go ahead and you manage the affairs of your idolatrous heathen people. And he said, but I'm, I'm going to do what God wants me to do. He said, the reason I have, the reason God's going to prosper us and the reason this is so deep in my heart is because I have a relationship. And I'm convinced in our churches that that's why we, you know, we, we wonder why and, and preachers sit around and they'll say, I just don't know why people are not engaged in the message. They're not engaged. It's hard to get them to do anything anymore. Hard to get them to come anything anymore. And I'm glad, I'm glad we're above the norm for that. Well, it's hard to get this. You just pry, pull, and beg, and do. And you can't get them to do nothing. You can't just... I, listen, a lot of that is, is one reason. There's no connection to God. They never repented of their sins. And by faith, trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior. You can't get a pig to behave like a giraffe. You can't get a pig to behave like a sheep. Because they're not. What do they act like? Pigs. David had his pigs get out this week. Why do they always call daddy when that happens? Why don't you call mama? I was on the phone with a church member this week in this deep conversation. He's blowing my phone up. I thought, he can just wait. It's whatever it is, he can wait. And then I hear him hollering down there. I thought, uh-oh. <laughs> I better get down there. And so I went down there and those things, and they was having the best time. They, they didn't know anything was wrong in the world. They didn't know who the president, just kidding, who the president was or nothing like that. Y'all can laugh a little bit. And they was just, they just, uh, I mean, I stuck my foot right up in one's mouth. And he just, and he finally saw my foot and, he just did like that. He just kept doing like that. Had in the water. They was having a big time. Then rooted out some places and made a big old mud hole. Why? Because that's what pigs do. I didn't expect them to be standing up at attention when I walked down there. <laughs> hey, Pastor White. <laughs> You know, y'all get back in there. Okay, yes, sir. <laughs> they didn't do that. It wasn't their nature. You can't expect unregenerate people. Listen, well, my, this, my friend at work, my, my girlfriend at work was saying, why are you listening to your girlfriend at work? They don't understand. I got a little quiet right there. I'm not much of a fisherman. I don't want to get hung up. I just go and I get closer to it then when I get hung up to get it out. And my girlfriend says, what are you listening to that for? I got an old boy at work. He told me, and? And that old boy's not saved? Not doing right? Still got the bracelet from, from Friday night on his arm? Just use your imagination. Whatever kind of bracelet you want to think it is. I mean, he's still got the, he's still got the sensor on his ankle. And you're asking him for advice. They're not going to understand. And it's not to make fun. They need Jesus Christ. I want everybody. But it's, I, I'm blown away at how little discernment we have today in listening to unregenerate people. They should not have a voice in your family. They should not have a voice with your kids. They should not have a voice with your marriage. They should have no voice in your life. I was just watching this show. I was listening to this podcast. Oh, wonderful. I'm glad you listened to podcasts. But what kind are you listening to? Was that person in church Sunday? They're not going to understand. There's something different. Nehemiah said, the reason, number one reason I'm not coming down because I got a connection here. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. As you all do whatever you want. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 34. Notice this and just listen to me. This is talk, the, the hall of faith in Hebrews 11. Are you with me? 
Y'all know there's a list of people who were famous for their faith. God included them. I want you to listen to what they went through. Quenched the violence of fire. Escaped the edge. I'm in verse 34 of chapter 11. Escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. Waxed valiant in fight. Turned to fight, flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance. Notice they were tortured, not accepting deliverance. They had a way out and they said, no, I'd rather die with Jesus. He said, I'm not, what was, well, it's, it's totally foreign to our culture right now. Amen. Not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mocking, scourging, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Notice what God says about them, verse 38, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. And God having provided some better thing for us, they, they without us should not be made perfect. Think about all they went through. We have a connection to that. We have a connection. We should have a connection. That, that, I mean, that's our people. They gave their life for what they believed. And over in, in Psalm 78, he's talking about really the family in verse number, in verse number six, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they, verse seven, might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Whose job is to set their hope in God? That means that to display the fact that God's character can be trusted. I mean, he, he's the guarantor. He, he is everything. It's our job to set their hope in God, their confidence in God. It's our job. He said in Psalm 78, it's our job to set their confidence in God. So whose job? It's our job. And so let me, let me say to all of us this morning, we have an obligation. And, and the number one reason to remain is because of our heritage. And some of you are wobbly on the shaft right now. And your children are suffering and your grandchildren are suffering. And we need to be engaged in the battle. It is a warfare. Some of you mamas need to be praying more. Let's get off social media, dads, moms, pray more. This is a battle. It's not a playground. It's not the doggy daycare. This is a battle. Hey, we, we got to pray. And it takes intensity among God's people to say, I'm not going to let uh, this next generation fall or slip through my fingers. I'm not going to let them go. I'm not going to just watch while they go and say, it's just the time we're living or it's just the culture. Some of us need to say, and, and some of us that are on the edge about quitting and just, you, you haven't quit, but you're not there. You've been distracted. As Ezra said, your, your, focus, is, uh, your focus has been messed up. It's been confused. Your purpose has been confused. I want you to look at that real quick and I'm going to close. We'll pick up the rest of it tonight. But I want, I want you to see in the book of Ezra. Chapter number four. Ezra chapter number four. Now remember, Zerubbabel leading... And Jeshua, the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, you have nothing, chapter four, verse three, you have nothing to do with us to build a house to our God. But we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, hath commanded us. Then the people of the land weaken the hands of the people of Judah and trouble them in building. Listen, this world wants to weaken your hands, church. Why do you think they spend billions of dollars in, in marketing? And that new show on FX with that witch. 
cartoon. Why do they spend billions? They want your children. They want your family. And we're sitting back and making sure they got the bicycle I had when I was a boy. They need more than a bicycle. They need more than an inheritance. Forget the will. You leave them something that that will won't buy. And we're, we're sacrificing our children. He said, you, you, these people have weakened their hands. Verse 5, notice this. And hired counselors against them. They put some money up. They hired counselors. Counselors cost money to frustrate their purpose. You know what's happened to us today, church? Our purpose has been frustrated. We've been distracted. We've been duped. We've had the message diluted. Our purpose has been frustrated. It's been lost. The purpose has been lost. And what, what's got to happen is you have to understand your responsibility. What's a big deal about us remaining, Pastor? Reads the term. Why is it such a big deal? Because you got to set the pace. You got to set the example. And there's not a time. There's not a, an exit strategy. There is no exit strategy on the earth. Now we got one in heaven. Amen. You better have one. But as far as leaving our job, our post, there is no such thing. And some of you in, in your mid midlife, you need to understand and you need to recommit that the last half of my life is going to be given uh, to setting a good example and showing the next generation, not just telling them how to do it. We're going to show them how to do it. And if you're going to stay at it, you've got to, you've got to understand your connection, the connection to your heritage. And I will say this, I want to, I believe you ought to be connected to the heritage of, of biblical preaching, Amen. biblical living, holy living. There's more, uh, this, that's part of our heritage. It's biblical. It's not some from conference and some convention. We need to be connected to our heritage in the form of, of biblical living, biblical preaching. Tying our life to the Bible. And may God help us, church. I'm so burdened. If you're a grandparent here, you have a responsibility, not just to your kids, to the kids of this church and the kids of your community. And if you're not a grandparent, you have a responsibility to your kids and the kids of your community. You said, I don't have any kids. You still have a responsibility. And if you're bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, you even have a greater responsibility to the children of this church to do right and not be critical all the time. Be talking about whatever's wrong. What's wrong with this and what's wrong with that? We need to be saying what's right with it. May God help us to finish strong. Reggie Jackson had a great start to 71 or 69. He didn't have a good finish. Let's have a strong finish. And the first, the first reason to remain is, Nehemiah, why didn't you come down, sir? Because I got a connection here. First of all, to God. Then he said, I got people buried here. I got people buried here. You know, I, 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 I couldn't live with myself if I did something to embarrass Brother Roy. And he's gone. This I'll be honest, I could, I'd, I'd be embarrassed. I don't understand this new generation with it. I don't understand it. We've been handed a rich heritage. Now, I'm not talking about wiring glasses and not pumping gas on Saturday night. I'm not talking about that. We have a heritage. We have something that's been handed to us. And boy, we need to make sure that it gets passed on to the next generation. And if you quit, it won't. There's going to be a missing link. If, if your link breaks, they're, they're doomed. You, you're part of the chain. Keep thinking, ah, they don't care. I don't know me. No, nobody in there know my name. Don't know young person there know my name. God knows. And you're going to answer to him for your responsibility of being an example. They know it when you miss. They know it when you're not there. They know it when you're there, but you're not there. They know it when you fuss about how much a youth activity costs. Oh, 
God. All, money on these young people. Money on these young people. Absolutely. We need to do more. Absolutely. If FX can put out millions to put a witch on TV, we can do better than that. Thank you. I was wondering if you was awake, Miss Rebecca. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Hey, don't let it be your link. It falls short. Don't let the weak link be you. Amen. Stay in it. And don't cave into this pressure of our day, this woke pressure. Don't cave into that junk. Don't cave into it. We're, we're not woke or unwoke. You know what we'll be? Biblical. We'll be Bible believers. That's what we're to be. We're not to be puppets of the culture. Or to be followers of Jesus Christ. May God help us. Father, thank you for this day. I pray that you'll speak to hearts during this invitation. And I pray there's one here today that's not saved. I pray they'll be saved before it's too late. And I pray for those that are saved, but they just got out. They got out. Whether it's out, maybe, maybe not out of church, but they just got out of the race like they're out. God put them back in. They're not out of salvation. But Lord, they're just out. They're on the side. They're watching. Help them to be reengaged before it's too late. Because Lord, I surely believe you're coming quickly. And even so, come Lord Jesus. God, in the meantime, I pray you'd help us to be aggressive in our fight for the next generation. In Jesus' name. Heads bowed and eyes closed. If you're here this morning, you said, Pastor, I'm not sure that I'm saved. I, I'll be honest with you. I, I don't know for sure if I died today, I'd go to heaven. I'm going to tell you, that's the most important thing you can know. Anything else you do after that, it's not. I mean, you, until you do that, until you know you're saved, until you know you're born again, you know you're redeemed, everything else, your, all of your efforts outside of that will be futile. There's only two places to go when a person dies, heaven or hell. There's no purgatory. There's no in-between. There's no time to be bought out. Heaven or hell. To be absent from the bodies. To be present with the Lord for those that are saved. For those that are not saved. And to be weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth. For all eternity. Only two places. Maybe you're here to say, Pastor, I'm not sure that I'm saved. I'll pray for me. Would you lift your hand and let me pray for you? I'll pray for you. Pastor, pray for me. I'm not sure that I'm saved. Pray for me. Anyone like that? Just slip it up, take it back down. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to come to you, but I'll pray for you. Pastor, pray for me. I'm not sure. Pastor, pray for me. Anyone like that? Thank you. Anyone else? Pastor, pray for me. Anyone else? Anyone in the balcony? Pastor, pray for me. I'm not sure that I'm saved. You're here and you are saved. How many would say that, Pastor? I know I'm saved. Would you lift your hand? I know, I, I know Christ is Savior. You may put your hands down. How many who are here who say I'm saved? Say, Pastor, I'm saved, but I'll be honest. I feel at times I'm disengaged. I'll be honest. I feel at times I'm disengaged. And I want you to pray for me. That won't be the case. Would you lift your hand? Thank you. All over the building. Thank you. Anyone else? Pastor, I feel, I'm going to be honest, at times I feel disengaged and I, I want to be counted. I want to be in place. I want to be in the battle for the Lord Jesus. Would you lift your hand? Amen. Amen. Let's stand together and my wife's going to sing for us today. She's going to sing the invitation as she begins. Hey, don't wait. Once you come, if you need to be saved, you come. If you want to just come and say, Pastor, I want to be reengaged. I want to be reengaged.
Would you come and this God help you? Would you come for the sake of the next generation? Church memory, you matter to this church. You matter to this church. It's funny, we can get a burden for our families and we can get a burden for our children and our grandchildren, and we should have. But how many times have you cried and fasted over somebody else's children, over somebody else's grandchildren, whom the devil has in his snares? But you determine today, I'm not going to let it happen on my watch. I'm going to remain like Nehemiah said, I'm not coming down. I'm not coming down. As you come, let the Lord help you. Wait just a moment. If you need to come, you come. His bow and eyes closed just for a moment. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for your goodness, your mercy. And God, I pray you'll continue to help us. The remainder of this service, thank you for a good day. I pray you'll bless those that have visited with us today and those grandparents that have come. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being here today. And those who came for part of our Legacy Sunday, thank you for being here. If you were invited by your grandchildren come watch them thank you for coming many of you come uh, some of you come from other good churches and thank you for that and uh, maybe many of you are not in church if that's the case I know of a good church and uh, hope to see you back here it's so good to see you and those visiting for the first time we're glad you're here and my wife and I are going to be or maybe just, yeah my wife and I she was playing the piano I just want to make sure she can come with me and we're going to be dismissed right now and we'd love to meet you in the back and have a gift for you brother Fredericks is going to come with some announcements all right, visitors, get that head start. Head right back to the vestibule. Several things going on. Uh, it's also Grandparents' Day, so we do have a gift for all the grandparents that are here. I think it's an RC Cola and a Moon Pie, right? Relive those days, make you feel young again. And so you can grab them in one of two spots. There are some right out here in the vestibule. There are some on the game floor, and the reason it's there, we've got a sign about 10 by 12 high. It's the same uh, uh, image that you saw at the beginning and end of the video. Uh, we put the fun and grandparents uh, day. And so, so, so if you want to go out there and get a picture with your grandkids, you can feel free to do that, and your treats will be there as well. Then let me say these church announcements. We have a wedding shower coming up Sunday, September 25th. 5 to 5.45 in the, in the fellowship building. It'll be for Alex and Zach. And uh, they're back there. Wave at us, Alex and Zach, back there. Thank you. And uh, so that'll be September 25th, 5 to 5.40. What did I say? Alexis and Zach. That's why she wasn't waving. Hey, Alexis. Sorry about that. Thank you. And uh, so you can uh, be there for that. Then camp meeting, September 19th to the 21st. Any ladies or men that are interested in helping during the day for camp meeting, 
Please sign up in Miss Brittany's office right over here. Also, we need volunteers for the nursery on Monday and Tuesday night. Sign up sheets are available. Couples retreat. Two things. Uh, if you have not completed, your final payment is due today. Also, the questionnaire that we gave you about three weeks ago that we asked you to get turned in, that is due today. So if you need to pull it out of the glove box and fill it out before tonight, we'd appreciate it. And uh, get those turned into Tabitha Blaylock. After church tonight, we'll have Pastors All-Stars. And then we have choir meeting at 5 o'clock. Our scheduled Sunday school teachers meeting at 5.30 will not happen tonight. So teachers, take the night off. But go to this choir meeting if you need to. That'll be right here in the choir loft. Prayer rooms will be open at 5.30. Freedom Kids practice at 5.30. And then, of course, uh, the evening service tonight at 6. So again, once we dismiss, grandparents, if you want to pick up your gift out in the vestibule or on the game floor and get your picture taken, we'd love for you to be there. Thank you so much for being with us. God bless you. You are dismissed.